Today at shopdav.com, we talk about how not to buy a Mark 5 GTI. The Mark 5 GTI was produced from 2006 until 2009. For its time, the Mark 5 GTI was a pretty solid performing vehicle, but not this one. The Mark 5 GTI was the first performance Volkswagen model to come standard with the DSG transmission as opposed to the standard automatic. The Mark 5 was also the first GTI to have an independent rear suspension and is the only GTI to come from the factory as standard with Xenon headlights still to this day. From 2006 to 2008, a Mark 5 GTI would have had a 2 liter turbo FSI engine with a timing belt and from 2008 till 2009, this car would have a 2.0T TSI engine which would have a timing chain. Around 2009, it was touted by most of the enthusiast community that the TSI was much better than the FSI because of all the issues with camshafts, cam followers, high pressure fuel pumps around the FSI engine. But due to these timing chain issues that are currently happening with TSIs, it seems like that may not be the case. We do have common problem articles for both TSI and FSI engines, which we will link to in the description below. They will be helpful if you own a TSI or FSI engine, or if you're looking to buy a car that has an FSI or a TSI engine. We also have an FSI engine build for a big turbo that we did on a Mark V a while back, and you can check out that series if you're into performance and upgrades. So this car is 2009 Mark V GTI, 194,000 miles on it. So the expectations here of what this car is going to drive like, be like, and just overall fit and finish is probably gonna be pretty rough. I expect any car with 200,000 miles to be not in great shape. So at first glance, this car is a little loud, um, most likely tire noise. Tire noise is pretty common if you don't rotate your tires often or uh, get alignments on a regular basis. So both of those would be something that I generally don't expect a lot of people to spend the money on because they don't really recognize usually until you burn through a set of tires and you know, five, 10,000 miles because the alignment's way, way out. You don't recognize how important alignments are. Performance wise, accelerates pretty strong. I believe this car actually is tuned. It does have a boost gauge so we could easily test that just to see how much boost we put out. No, it does not appear to be tuned. Uh, it's got eight PSI, so you're probably not gonna be able to hear it, but at stop, it does sound like there's some binding going on in the front shocks that's at low speed. It probably needs strut bushings or bearings. It's not urgent, but something to be aware of that could potentially get worse over time. Other than the vibration, which I think probably is related to, to tire cupping, doesn't actually drive too bad. So whenever you're first looking at a vehicle, the best thing to do is start with the exterior of the car. You're going to want to look around the vehicle completely, find any cosmetic damage, modifications, anything of that sort that has going on with the vehicle so you can be aware of anything that you might find or have to deal with if you do purchase the vehicle. So this vehicle does have these quick connects which is, are not clipped on on the side of the bumper. All they are is a strap that holds it on. Usually this would happen if it was damaged in some way or if the vehicle has some issue around the fender mounting with causing an issue. All these things do is slide onto a guide and then screw on from the side, but they may not have been aware of that. And so they threw these quick connects on to keep the bumper on. So we can pull this off to see what's underneath here. Yo, pranked, baby. <laughs> the bumper clearly fell on the ground. There, there appears to be an issue with the, with the mounting of this particular fender. There was a bracket that actually would mount in place here that appears to be missing. So whatever was damaged, there does appear to be a bracket right underneath here that is not mounted on the bottom side. So that actually looks like you could probably just put a screw back in it and fix that fender right there. So problem solved. Now the grill of this has an aftermarket emblem in it. It has a red insert that may or may not be your taste. It's slightly modified. It also has holes for what was likely a Euro plate at some point. Now a Mark V GTI would have a side skirt on here that would be a black textured piece. Uh, this car has no side skirt and damage right here in the rocker. I assume that's probably what knocked the side skirt off. So on this vehicle, you would want to replace that to make it look like the other side. Whenever buying a used car, you will want to look at the wheels. Oftentimes they will be curbed up. These aren't curbed, but they are aftermarket wheels. 
and uh, they have some very nice Road Hugger Ultra GTs. When we come around to the rear of the vehicle, we have a emblem that's been painted as well as the backing, the Mark V logo there, and then some damage here. So uh, we would probably swap this out because I think it's been painted and you can't remove that and then you'd probably remove that as well and maybe put a GTI badge or no badge at all. This car also has a windshield, rear windshield wiper delete, which is a pretty popular thing to do. It's something that if you want to use your rear wiper, may not be the best idea because you then don't have a wiper. You might think that the lighting is deceiving, but it appears as though this car has uh, three of one tail light and one of another. So these are the tint, darker tinted lights on this one and those two over there. And then this one is a bright red. So the tail lights don't match. Now I'm not sure how much of this is going to come through on camera, but if you look at the Xenon lights, the driver side light and the passenger side light are not the same color. So this one is probably a slightly different color. It could be a cheaper bulb. They're definitely not the same temperature as far as color. So this one is a more blue color. That's probably more like the factory color on a factory HID bulb. Now the gas door on this car has been painted before, but this is one note that we're gonna be doing a video talking about paint work with a body guy, but blending is an important thing to do whenever you're doing body work because if you paint just the door by itself, it's likely to end up a slightly different gray than the rest of that, even if they have professional body guys who mix the paint and the whole deal. So the roof of this car looks like they've probably put a Christmas tree or something on top and tied it down uh, because it has a bunch of horizontal scratches across it. It's possible that this might buff out uh, from a, a professional detailer who might be able to pull a lot of these scr scratches out of the paint. Scratches. We also have a broken windshield on this. Uh, it is not majorly broken, but it is something that would probably be considered in the line of your vision. A lot of this stuff that we're finding on this vehicle are not necessarily surprises because a very high mileage vehicle is going to expect to have a lot of cosmetic defects, potentially mechanical defects as well. So as we look in the interior, also has some uh, defects here. The shifter trim is completely destroyed, which we would have to either remove and replace completely or remove, strip, and paint, as in we saw in our Touareg uh, peeling button video that we did. And the radio is missing a button here. The dash trim, it was wrapped. It's normally aluminum. It was wrapped in red. We did peel it to see if there was damage behind it over here. And on the door, it doesn't appear that the case. It may They may have done that to modify it. The one other thing with the interior uh, that's going to be cosmetically bad is all of the door panels have either falling off or completely fallen off fabric on the actual doors themselves. Now you can either attempt to buy used door panels or attempt to rewrap these or have an upholstery shop wrap them for you. The same goes for our center armrest, which the leather on that is cracking uh, and as well as the e-brake handle that is also uh, pretty rough looking as well. On the driver's side here, we have a boost gauge. They did not use a pod. They just kind of stuck it to the dash here so we could probably peel this off and clean that up and get a gauge pod for it mounted somewhere in that general vicinity to clean this thing up. Now we go to our rear of our vehicle here and the vents appear to work. Uh, the one knob here is missing, which is not it's really a huge deal. And clearly we have what I believe would be a cup holder here missing that probably someone tried to jam a giant Gatorade bottle into it and they snapped it off. Now the headliner of this vehicle, as you can see, is falling. It is an aftermarket headliner, so they probably didn't use the proper adhesive when they installed this one, and it's falling again. So we would have to have a headliner person replace this for us. Now we look under the hood of our TSI engine. It does have a carbon fiber battery cover. This is a brand new intake on it that uh, the original intake was replaced on this vehicle because it had a cheap eBay one and it was causing the car to run poorly because the mass airflow sensor ha had a poor location in it. So the car did not run properly at all. Uh, this does have a new PCV valve. This, this hose is new. These coils look fairly new and it looks like some of this stuff has also been replaced of this sheathing here. Nothing under here stands out to be majorly wrong. You'd be, want to look at the cam cage to make sure it's not leaking here or around the back. You also can look at the 
vacuum pump back here to make sure you don't have an oil leak there. As we come around this side, you can look straight down under here. This is where the water pump would be and you would be looking for leaks underneath, but that's something that we'll look at once we get to the bottom. We know because of the things that we've done to this vehicle in the past, this car already has a rear main seal. So you'll see underneath here that there's going to be some clean marks from where we cleaned off to verify the rear main seal was done and not leaking currently after we replaced the rear main seal, which is also a common problem on TSI engines. This car has Road Hugger Ultra GTs on there and they do have some wear issues, so you can check that out. So as you see the Road Hugger spin, the inside of this Road Hugger has been hugging a little too much. It's got some wear here. It's very uneven, so this thing probably has a pretty significant alignment issue. You can see this, this has got plenty of tread on the outside and a lot of issues on the inside. So. This could be camber, but usually camber will not wear this harsh compared to the outer edge. So this is probably a toe issue. Now we're in the passenger rear. This hugger has got even more wear on it related to the, the driver's rear hugger. That one had even less damage than this. So you can see there's a lot of tread life on this outer edge here. And the inner side here has a lot of cupping to it, which is kind of uh, uneven wear that kind of they call scallop or, or cupping and there's basically the inside of this tire is completely done and the outside still has good tread. So we have some pretty serious alignment issues that uh, we're probably on the verge of having cords come through on this tire. This last Roadhugger GT does also still have some pretty nasty inside wear uh, causing some alignment issues. Again, this one does have a, about to have cords come through on this inner edge. So these will need to be taken care of as well. So we look at the oil pan here. It looks like it's been contacted across here, possibly in some way. Uh, there's a little bit of rust there and possibly from hitting stuff in the road, but no leaks of any kind. So it just, just looks like surface rust, no big deal. When we look over here again, this is where we had the rear main done and you can see this is all clean in this area here. There is a little bit of seepage of some oil here. This could have just been potentially some stuff residue left over from when the rear main was leaking or it could be potential blow by coming through these hoses here. Boost pipes will potentially have a little bit of oil spray coming out of them from the oil in them uh, when they hit boosts on occasion that will happen. And as we inspect the serpentine belt you can see we got a little situation here because this is not a dual belt situation. Should be a single belt situation but there's more belts than one here. This is the insert into the subframe and then here is the mount that actually goes to the transmission. So this part looks new, this metal portion here, same thing with the bolts there, but this thing looks pretty rough. So I don't know if maybe this thing was modified at some point and they had an insert in here and then ripped it out or what the deal is, but this thing is clearly got some pieces flapping around there. See if we can wiggle it around. I don't know how much play this thing's gonna have. It's got some, but it really doesn't look too, too bad. I suspect this thing could have some jerking in due to this bushing here. All right, now I'm just gonna check these bushings here and I'm just gonna stick a pry bar in and I'm gonna kind of put some pressure on this bushing to see if it flexes a lot. It actually seems okay, although it is dry rotted on this side here. And the last time I did this in a video, a wheel almost fell on my head and killed me. We're gonna be replacing these because that's definitely a safety concern that every time you hit the brake, the entire thing shifts like that. And if we look here at this tie rod end, you can see the boot split open here. What will happen is over time, dirt will get in there and become uh, an issue for wear. So it'll start to wear the joint and eventually you'll have play in your tie rods. At this point, this tie rod does not have any play. We did check for that, but this is something that isn't urgent, but wouldn't need to be replaced uh, or it will become an issue. Now the outer CV boot you can see is cracked right here. This is not the worst place to have a CV boot issue because it's at the inner part of it where it's not gonna throw a lot of grease. You can see there's some up here that's gonna be thrown around, but you should either replace the boot or you'd wanna replace the whole axle. A lot of times people with stuff like this just replace the whole axle with an aftermarket one because it's cheaper and a lot, heck of a lot less messy than trying to replace an outer boot. And if we take a look at the boot here, for the ball joint, it's also ripped. So this is the same deal. This doesn't seem to have a lot of play, but it is torn. So at some point we're gonna have to replace this. On the passenger side, this end does appear as though this has a different end on it than the driver's side. 
This could be because this part was updated, but it also could be because the wrong part got put on the car. This does happen sometimes that people don't know, they don't know that they got the wrong part and the wrong part gets put on the car. So this could potentially create an alignment issue or it could be nothing at all. Um, but that is something to take note of. This car does also have on the passenger ball joint damage to the boot of the lower ball joint as well. Now this car also has these sway bar and link boots torn as well. They don't appear to have any, a ton of play, uh, but that is something, again, same deal, could be an issue in the future. This car does have some kind of oil leak in this area as well. So it looks like it's not too big of a deal, but it is there and it could be this lower timing cover, uh, which would be addressed if you were to deal with chain stuff anyway. So, but that is something that we have to take a look at. And here we have at the back of an exhaust clamp here, you can see all this moisture that you see here. This is because there is an exhaust leak. So a byproduct from exhaust is water. And when it leaks, you will see kind of wet spots in that area. So generally not a big deal. Uh, it is just something that you usually will have annoying noises related to exhaust leaks like that. Now if we're in our vehicle. We are going to get a scan. You should do this on any vehicle that you're going to purchase or thinking of purchasing. Uh, we're going to do a full scan. This is with OBD 11. This is a Volkswagen Audi specific scan tool. They did just release their newest version, which is on iOS and Android. The previous version was Android only. So we're going to start by doing a full scan and AC control module and secondary air injection solenoid valve. So we probably have two different issues. Uh, I know this car did have an air conditioning issue, something relating to the AC control module, which usually wouldn't be AC compressor. It's probably fan related, which uh, could be an issue because the fan control modules are built into the fans. Uh, then you have secondary air, which we would have to diagnose separately. Go into air conditioning, high pressure sensor. So that actually could just be as simple as an AC high pressure switch. Short to ground. Yeah, that's certainly could be a AC high pressure switch, which would make sense why the air conditioning wasn't working right. And we go into central electrics faults and left low beam headlight bulb. That could be because it's aftermarket, which we saw when we inspected it, it looked like it may be the wrong bulb. So um, it may just be an aftermarket bulb that's not communicating well, not playing nice with this car. So it thinks that the bulb is out. And steering column electronics, this is all faults related to the battery dying. Could have been a, an ignition switch that's either bad or going bad or went bad previously and then got fixed. Um, that type of stuff you just erase and then only worry about if they come back. Uh, this looks like it could potentially have a door latch issue that is not uncommon on pretty much most current model Volkswagen Audis have door latch issues that are sporadic. We have a bunch of articles that show you how to do it and replace it and diagnose it and a bunch of things like that, which we can also link to. Now, the last thing that I would want to check on a TSI engine is for timing chain stretch. Now, what you would do in that circumstance, we have a DIY that shows you this, but you're going to check with the scan tool. It's going to tell you the stretch range. Again, DIY will link in the description. And this car, it has a uh, stretch number. It's at 4.1. This is below five is the range of where you, you absolutely have to replace it. Some of you would want to keep an eye on it over time with this car, but it's not something that is in dire need of replacement. So mechanically, this car is actually in pretty solid shape while aesthetically and cosmetically, it's in pretty rough shape. Mechanically, this is actually a solid car and you can drive it and not really have any major concerns to worry about. The only major concern at this point you would have to replace would be the assert belt and the tires and then you could drive this car uh, and decide how much you wanted to fix it cosmetically. So a car like this could be a good driver for somebody uh, or uh, you know, a big project if you're looking to take on to make it really nice. This car is for sale. So if you're brave enough to take this on, let us know. It's a deal. It's an amazing deal. I just showed you everything wrong with this car. So there is no questions. There is no coming back with problems because we've showed you all, all of it. Everything there was, maybe not everything, but link in the description for purchasing this vehicle. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.